David Adesanya here, your uncrowned 145 pound champion. You already know who's sitting in front of me. He is fresh off an epic battle against Drikas Duplessis, Israel, the last starbender Adesanya. Mm. How are you, champ? I'm gravy. I'm chilling. Mm. How are you feeling today? How's the body? Uh, I think I had a bruised rib, so I went to go check the x rays and it wasn't. It wasn't cracked or anything, but it was just bruised. Body's pretty good, surprisingly, um, for a hard fought battle. But yeah, I feel I had a hard body for this this fight. So yeah, able to withstand a lot of um a lot of damage. All right, what a week. How did it feel to be back? Let's start with fight week, you know, going through the process that you've done a number of times already. Did it all still feel familiar? Yeah, it did. Um, just like riding a bike, it just felt like clocking back into work. And I did it this time, I guess, with renewed energy. So all the things that maybe in the past I would have been feeling like it's tedious work or this and that, I just try to take it in with, you know, appreciation. Like, um, even the media questions, the repetitive ones, called out a reporter at one point because I was just like, you're not listening. But um, yeah, it was nice to come back to work. It was nice to come back to work with the fight week stuff. You look to be in the best physical condition of your career this fight. Um, we posted all the strength and conditioning programming you were doing, the stuff you were doing with Bill at the New Zealand Sports Performance Institute. Um, everyone saw your physique and the muscle mass that, that, that you had put on. How did your body feel coming into fight week and going through the weight cut? Amazing. I felt, yeah, this is the best I've felt as an athlete. I just felt good. I felt really good this camp. I felt really good fight week. I felt good during the trainings during fight week. I felt fast. I was adjusting to my speed even better than I was the week before. I just felt like I was sharp. I felt really sharp. Mm. Let's get to fight night. How was the atmosphere in the locker room? Let's talk about Dan kicking it off. <laughs> that fucking psycho. Before Kai did his thing. How was yeah. the atmosphere in the locker room as you guys were going out mm. and <clears throat> getting the results you wanted? But not only the results you wanted, but everything was going like it was during fight week as you boys were going through your, your, your rounds in the week. Mm. Dan would come in chomping at the bit, ready mm. to fight, fucking trying to front kick through people's people's spines. <laughs> uh, and then, you know, the performance he had, it was just bang, bang. Everything was just going, going, yeah. going. How was the atmosphere in the, the locker, locker room? room? Yeah. yeah, same thing. What we've done all week. Dan fucking just, was, he's just ready to go. I knew straight away, I was like, Dan's going to set this off, get this party started. And um, yeah, he did. In were you able to watch way. his fight or were you... No, I watched his fight, but I was, um, I, was, I was stretching. I was watching his fight. Um, but yeah, he just set it off exactly what I thought. And Kai was so sharp. I already knew from fight week, I was like, man, he's looking sharp. And Steve is dangerous, bro. Ersik might be inexperienced uh, a little bit when it comes to pro fights, but he's a fucking dangerous dude. And I like the respect between both guys as well. But yeah, Kai was just fucking on demon time. It was on it's evil Kai. Yeah, Evil Kai was on. Um, and then, uh, yeah, the, the, the atmosphere in the locker room was was on. How were you able to keep yourself um, calm and not let, you know, your adrenaline build up and get, you know, too up and down as you watch, you know, mm. Dan and Gamrock go to absolute mm. fucking war? Experience. Experience at doing this. Uh, I just knew I was like... I can let myself feel the emotions, but not let it, and then ah, adrenaline dump. So nah, I've been here before with teammates fighting. So yeah, even when Kai was fighting, I missed the knockdown because I was warming up. But then I was like, oh yeah, let's go. And I went back to warming up. So I'm going to go back and watch the fight now. And uh, I've seen the knock knockdown now, just beautiful. Just Kai time, the title shot next, guaranteed. And then Dan now should be top five. Um, so yeah, he's right in there as well. And yeah, the atmosphere in the in, in the locker room was already was it's prime. It's perfect. You say pressure makes diamonds. This is not the first high profile fight you've had where whether it's a where the world is watching mm. and the build up is whether it's a heated rivalry or there's bad blood. 
Mm-hmm. Um, you talked about the added pressure that you put on yourself. Mm-hmm. How are you able to channel and manage that in a way where it doesn't affect you negatively? Mm, experience, um, breathing top down, you know, using your breath to control my mind and then let everything flow. Um, and again, just trusting myself. I trusted myself. I just said all week, I trust myself. When I'm in there, when it's time to go, I know how to go. And I knew, because everyone thought, oh, you know, this is just gonna walk back and throw leg kicks and this and that. I'm like, nah, trust me. When it's time to go, I'm gonna go at him. And I did. Um, but I just, I just trusted myself and top down control. Let's talk about your entrance, uh, mm. the walkout, the song choice. How did that all, all come about? AB just told me some guy wanted to send me a, or like made like a highlight, but he just played it for me. And as soon as I heard it, like the initial was, I had Donda Kanye West, um, his mom speaking was the intro. But then when I heard that, I was just instantly, I was like, yo, Luca, I need to change this. And just quickly chopped it up. Cause that, every time I heard it, just made. Explain what it is, the language, so, and then what the actual it's, translation it's, is. Uh, Kilongpe, Oriki, a Yoruba Oriki. But when you, when you sing it, it's called something else. But um, it's like a Yoruba incantation, just like, uh, I don't even know how to describe it. Cause even it just, it's, it's powerful. Anyone who hears it just knows what time it is. And then when I heard my name through it as well, and it's the, 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 the rhythm, the, the frequency she was singing it at, it was just so amplifying. I was just like, I can't wait to hear this on the speaker. I knew on the speakers, it's gonna kick, it's gonna pump. So yeah, um, it was just too, it was too powerful. And then that went into 11.11 by Breezy. Cause in 2018, I came out to Juicy Booty. Cause that was a, that was a vibe at the time. And yeah, it just, it was just a vibe, man. And even the atmosphere, it just felt like when I got in there, I was just bouncing to the music. I was feeling myself like, yeah, it was a vibe. As you went through the check-in, uh, they put the Vaseline on you up the stairs and your feet touched the canvas. <laughs> that distinct feeling of the UFC canvas on your feet. Yeah. It's been a long time for you. Yeah, but it's, perform- it's deja vu, it's familiar. So even though the stairs, I first had the stairs, I was like, ooh, can you hear the sound? I just, you just feel the impact. I just let it like reverb through me. I just, just you know, did my circle. And yeah, when I was in there, I was so comfortable. When he was in there, he was feeling the moment, but I was comfortable. He was shaking off the energy. I was able to stay in it, just bask in it. And not that I wasn't nervous, I was just controlling it better because I was comfortable. Even though it's been a while, I was able to just top down control, control what I can, which is me. But um, yeah, he's, you know, he's able to thrive in the chaos. Yeah. Um, have you watched the fight back? Yeah, finally today. I mean, How many look, times? And, and just one so far. I, I watch it again uh, probably when I, when I get home or on the plane or something. For me, if I if I if I win a fight, I like to watch it and admire what I did. But when I lose, I kind of get like meh. Now I watch the fight, like just uh, maybe a week later. I don't know. But this one, I was like, look, just rip the bandit off. I knew I did well, so I wanted to watch it. So I watched it today, and I was like, ah, that was a good fight. And look, I wasn't happy with the result, but I wasn't hanging on the result. I just wanted to have a good fight and I'm, I'm glad I did. I went in there after how long off, longest layoff of my career, came in the best shape I've ever been. And I had a good fight and I was doing well until you know he capitalized on, on, a, on a mistake on my part. Before we get into the fight, let's talk about when mm. Bruce Buffer was finishing the announcements. Mm. Could you hear them stomping on the floor of the rafters and it started to build and build and it's like the whole arena was shaking. Really? And it felt like, oh, like yeah, that's that a question. Could you hear it or were you so locked in and focused that you couldn't I, feel the arena? I could feel the energy. Shaking? I felt the energy like something like, like a roar. Yeah. And it was, yeah, I did. I, but I wasn't really paying attention to it at the time. I was just focused on drinkers, but I remember I was just, I could feel the- It sounded like, insane. So that was, they were, they were stamping. Yeah, they're, they're like, um, right as Buffalo was finishing, I could just hear it, and I started doing it, and it started building, 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 yeah. and I'm just like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I love that shit, man. I, I love that shit. 35 beats per minute. Really, that was during, the highest. During that fight, but yeah. yeah. As that moment was building, it was like, everyone was just <laughs> on the same wavelength. Wait, 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 wait. They're very, wait, 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 yeah, it's about, to, it's, about, it's, about to, it's about to happen, it's about to happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, uh, it was, it Nothing was, like it, man. Even it the moment when, unreal. is that picture I posted today with me and him in our stance right before the fight. Mm. 
Fuck, I love those it was movies, then. man. Oh, it was, was then, then. yeah, when, right, when, before, right before you got Oh, home. really? We're about to go, yeah, okay. yeah. Okay, I, I felt the energy, but I didn't really feel the shaking. I was just locked in. But that moment there, I posted a picture today because I saw my eyes and I was just like, fuck, I love that moment. It looks so cool because he's in his stance, like taking a knee, holding the cage. I'm in my crouching stance, holding the cage as well. And like, man, it just those moments, they're like iconic ones. Like the, one of my favorite ones was um, when I came in, Madison Square Garden with Pereira, and I, I walked, I was walking out to the saw theme. As I um, did my circle, when I got back to the red corner, boom, it was the crescendo of the song. Dun, 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 dun. And he's just standing, I think I talked about it, he's just standing there just looking at me. I remember thinking like, this is some movie type shit, like, <laughs> in my head. <laughs> I love this moment. I fucking love it, man. So me and him, when we were in those stances, I was just like, two beasts about to go at it. it fucking felt cool, man. All right, let's break down the fight um, uh, round by round. All right, round one. Break it down from your point of view. Mm, mainly boxed. Um, I know at the end of the round, you did let me know it was a close round, but you did well. And I could pick it up a bit, and I was like, bet. So then round two, I started what to about the, the, no, right around the first grappling exchange. Oh, bro. So I remember watching him and Strickland, and then he had a over-under on Strickland, and then just decided to squeeze and just take Strickland down. And everyone was talking about how strong and how thick he is. But I remember the first takedown, he threw a combo and f just, you know, he throws a combo sometimes just to get close to you and then f locks in. But then I had underhook and I just doosh. And I felt like, damn, I'm strong. <laughs> like I felt strong. And then I was able to just get away from that. And from that point, I was like, this guy's not going to keep me down. I just knew I was like, he's not going to keep me down. I'll, whatever happens, I'll be able to get back up to my feet. I'll be able to stop the takedown, but I felt strong. And I know, I don't want to say he's not strong. I think he's strong, but... You were strong too. I was strong, yeah. I was strong too, if not stronger. Do you feel like there were any elements of ring rust because it seemed like you were getting tagged with Silly shots things. that you wouldn't normally get tagged with? I don't, would you I don't, attribute, nah, I don't attribute say. that to his awkwardness and I the angles that, the strikes were coming from? I say his awkwardness. He covers distance really, really well. Even though he blitzes, leaves him open, definitely. But... Your exits were also sloppy. Yeah, but... Chill, daddy. <laughs> no, no, I'm just asking. I'm just asking. No, no, no. No, I'm just asking you. I'm just asking. That's not asking. I said, your exes were fucking sloppy. <laughs> Question mark. Question mark. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> nah, but um, yeah. What was I saying? Uh, for me, it's it's he covers distance so well, and then you time it, but. He, he's got longer arms as well. Like, none of his shots hurt me to the point where I was worried. Not one. Not one that made me go, ooh. But there was a couple, like, whiz passes. I was like, okay, don't get, still don't get hit by him. Because you can feel the weight behind the punches. Like, even when he jabs you and he's coming forward. Because he's moving his body forward. Or whatever, how many kgs he is right there. You feel the weight of it, but no snap. There's no snap. Snap in the shots, you know. He can, I'm not saying he can't snap. Like he snapped with his head back, you know. But that's also with his weight behind it. Stepped in with the back leg and boom, jabbed him on the southwest. Whitaker was coming forward. But um, yeah, nothing that I haven't felt before. Um, and I wasn't able to land a big shot properly on him. The best ones I can land were the uppercuts and the body shots. Uh, the body shots was money. I could tell already. At one point, I pointed his body like, I know they're working. Yeah, we'll get to it. Yeah. Round two. Round two seemed to be you were having more success on the feet. Um, and then the tie turned. Uh, one Took the, me down. Other, yeah. yeah, so I came in for something. I came in and he shot right in, boom, got me a takedown. And I was just like, don't panic. And then I literally looked at the fence. I'm like, he's trying to hold me and keep me away from the fence. I'm dragging him to the fence. I was just dragging his body. <laughs> and I go to the fence and he tried to jump on my back, try to get my neck. And I didn't panic again. We drilled that five weeks ago, I think. We did that for a whole two and a half weeks or so. So I was able to just peel his leg off and then put him back on the ground. Um, yeah, so. I mean, he had that body lock on you pretty much. Yeah, but I couldn't really do much with it. Even the punches, again, like, they, they didn't, they didn't do any, I won't say they didn't do any, but they scored points, but they didn't do any damage. They didn't like make me go, ooh. Like there's certain shots you get hit where you're like, okay, don't get hit by that. Um, but yeah, none of them made me feel like I need a Ooh, be careful. Ooh, you know, but like he scored some points and he, he took round two. And what type of type of advice were you getting from your coaches after those those first couple rounds? Because it um, wasn't like um 
Round one was close. Most people gave it to him. Oh, I think it was like split. Mm. Round two was clearly his round. What's Eugene, Twist, Mike, and Andre saying to you as you go in the corner trying to come round out from round two. three knowing that you could be potentially down two? Mm, I don't recall. I remember thinking he's tired. Um, I said he's tired. And then I said, I'm going to use the kicks more this round. And they're like, yes, but make sure you set it up maybe. Um, and you have to watch, I have to watch the corner thing again to remember. But Eugene was telling me to also exit cleanly. Like, um, make sure you, you know, draw something out before you enter, but also exit cleanly. Yeah, round three was your best round. Why do you think you were able to have so much success in that round? I listened. I listened to the corner and I was able to just, um, you know, do the things that we did to get inside, tag him, put him on his back foot, walk him down. Um, I was flowing. I think I hit him with a spinning elbow at one point. I set it up nice too. He just had his guard, his, his guard was high, but I set it up nice on the fly too. I didn't think about doing that. It just, just came. I was like, oh, there it is. Bah. And that's where freestyle like comes from. So for me, I was just like, yeah, I was just on the, I was on the, I was just flowing in the zone. A little bit of touch him and then the body bangers was working, man. Like the body bangers were starting to, I think I heard him twice to the body or once to the body in that round. Cause I knew, I was like, okay, the teeps as well were catching him. So yeah. Um, Talk to me about the pace of the fight because it was in round three where both of you were starting to look labored. Mm. It was starting to get, the fight was getting um, grimy. Not grimy, I mean like, yeah, but you were having- We're going back and forth. We're going back and forth, like trying to exchange. And I was able to still dodge a lot of his punches. I was yeah, able to see clearly. Yeah, but the way you guys clearly. were even like, you know, moving yeah. at some point, it was like, tired hey, these, a little these, bit. these guys are both like, you know, Yeah, going we're putting on. it, yeah. I, I, I told you I wasn't gonna, I'm gonna fight my heart. I'm gonna fight my hardest in this fight. So I, I put, I put it on him and I was trying to tag him. I wasn't trying to take him out. I was trying to tag him so I, because I knew the shot was coming and invest and I was getting the body as well. The body work was working so nicely. So um, it's only a matter of time. I knew it was only a matter of time before, uh, you know, it just started to break, break him down. That's what you want to say. You need to break him down. So we're breaking him down in round three. Do you think they expected you to have that sort of um, game plan where you're, you know, you're Coming in forward. the pocket, you're, you're, you're moving forward, landing nah. combinations. I know how to fight. I like, I, I've missed this. I've kind of, I've missed fighting. Sparring's nice, but the pressures of a big fight and then having to go in there with someone who's trained for how many weeks to try and fucking take you out as well. That's, that's the challenge. That's the thrill. Like, it's nothing like it. So I've missed it. So I wanted to be in a fight. I wanted to feel like I'd be in a fight. Like that feeling, you know? And even the leg kicks, they hit me, but I'm, I was fine today. I was surprised. Like, it wasn't the same. I think the muscle was really helped. Or maybe, I checked a couple of them, but some of them hit me, and I was just like, we'll see how that feels in the morning. But nah. And again, not taking credit from him. I just think it's the, oh, the work that we've done. Fortify the body. All right. Mm. Round four. Round four was going well. Um, you were having similar success Second as wind. you were. Second wind. Round three, momentum mm. was building until the finishing sequence. Mm. Um, take us through okay. the finishing sequence. Let me explain this because the commentary booth got it wrong. But again, it's on the fly and it's what you see in real time. I was moving and then my right ankle rolled and I tripped as he was throwing. As he was throwing. So... To the untrained eye, to, or in the moment, it looked like, I think, I can't remember who said, I think maybe Dom said, oh, that was a really bad shot he got hit with. And it looked like I was rocked. So, but then I like got up and circled out and I pointed at the ground, looking at him. And DC goes, he's pointing at the ground like Max Hollywood, like, come here. Nope. What I said to him was like, I tripped. You didn't rock me. I didn't want him, I didn't want him to think he rocked me or anything. But again, in hindsight, I think that moment, he used that as, as a moment to just capitalize. So then he just closed the distance on me straight away. And then just, him, yeah, some... yeah, I get, yeah, I, no, not even that. I gave him, not even that, I lost focus in that moment. Like just cause I, nah, I, I tripped, the floor tripped me. 
Because you see my, my ankle rolled as I felt it. And I was like, I don't think I was rocked. I was like, but again, the fight's such a blur. I'm like, am I, you're like, am I lying to myself? Did I get rocked and I don't remember? Or did I get flashed? I was like, I, I was like did I get flashed? But nah, I watched the tape back. I was like, nah. I, I tripped and I pointed to the ground like, nah. And they just swarmed me and then got on top of me. And then, yeah, I wasn't able to peel the leg off on the hand. Sorry, I wasn't able to peel the hand. It went to the gable grip. And then, yeah, got the choke. But yeah, I, round five felt good, man. I felt like the, the tide was shifting my ways. The body work was working. Um, did I add some more leg kicks? I can't remember now. But yeah, it was all building up the, like just building up the crescendo. But yeah, he just took that momentum away. But again, he's just good at what he does. And I was able to figure it out at some point. So I was guiding him away. I was able to read his left hand and see what he was doing when he blitz. But I just couldn't intercept him the way I wanted to in round three because I lost pop. But in round four, I gained a second win. So I started to touch him up again. Um, but yeah, that was round four. How tough is DDP? He's tough. Uh, he's stubborn. That's what it is. He's, he's stubborn. Even if he's tired. Because I remember, which one was it? I sprawled on him. It was around four. Beginning of round four, I hit him with like one of the meanest sprawls because he just shot. And I just put his face into the mat. Boom. And then uh, I think I tried to kick his body. I told him, get up. And then Mark was like, get up. And he lay there like, oh, he's on, he's on the ground. And he took a breath. And I was like, nah, he's done. So I, I tried to go for him. And even that moment, he still swung at me. I was like, fuck. So that stopped my momentum right there. So it's, it's, it's he's stopping. Most guys won't be able to do that while they're that tired. But he's just going to throw anyway, just because it's like, I need to just stop his momentum. So he'll throw, even if he misses, he at least he just stops me in my track. So I have to reset. And then come at him again. So it gives him a little breathing space for about a second or two. Um, but yeah, I think he's just really stubborn. Really, really stubborn. And what and, do you say about his mindset, his competitiveness? Yeah, stubborn. I think he's just a game, he's a game bred dude. He 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 likes fucking muddy fights, man. He likes to make it. <laughs> That's his thing. He's good at what he does. Did anything he do surprise you with? Mm. Nah. I expect him to be tough. I knew he was going to recover well. I knew he wasn't going to like quit or give up. Mm, but not, nothing did surprise me. Nothing did surprise me. Mm. You guys had an, had an extended exchange in, in the octagon mm. after the fight, man. Before and after the decision was, mm. the result was um, announced. What were you guys? Oh, it just gave me a lot of props, a lot of love, a lot of respect. And, you know, I accepted it. And uh, I shook his hand. And then after his interview, I, oh, after when we were living in the cage, we just talked and he said, uh, sorry, maybe. I can't remember, but what did he say? He said, just gave me a lot of props. And he said, hey, you know I'm a big fan. I'm like, of course. I was like, I know. Like, And I said, look, look how far we've come from way back then. Who would have thought? Now we're here. And we're like, fuck yeah. And then we hugged. And I said, look, I respect you. I appreciate you. And I said, like, if I see you again, I see you again. I'm going to try and kill you. He's like, I'm going to try and kill you too. Ah. <laughs> I gave him a little smooch. Oh, yeah. That was nice. I, I didn't even think of it. I was like, hey. I thought that was sweet. That was nice in the moment. I don't know. I didn't even think about it. I was like, hey. And just smiled. And we just hugged. It was just, it wasn't. I think DDP, I don't think he's a bad person. I don't know him. Again, like he said, we're not friends. We don't know each other. But. We can be cool, we're cool, we're cool. And I respect him, I respect him. And again, I said, look, what did I say in my, in my post? I said, like, he has the fire now, the torch now, you know, fucking inspire, inspire the people. I don't want, like I said, he started this with division. I'd rather not do that. I'd rather just unity. We need, I don't care what it is, we need unity, especially for the continent of Africa. I don't want us to be fighting each other, even though there's other people who, who want that. They, people in Africa who want that, people outside of Africa who want division because that's how they can control people. I'd rather unity. So that's why, I, even he gave me his jacket and it's nice because I, I saw him at the press and I was like, you like the shoes? I was like, nah, it's the jacket, looks good. And he already said he was gonna give it to me anyway beforehand, so I quite like that. Um, but yeah, I'd rather preach unity than division and again, what did I say last time that I didn't really understand until I saw that Dave Chappelle special? And that's the trick to life. You have to be wise enough to know when you were living in your dream 
And you have to be humble enough to accept when you're in someone else's. That right there, I understand it better now. So for me, I'm like, you know what? That's cool. It was his night, you know, good for him. And he won fair and square. Um, yeah, so I don't have any like, oh, God damn it. One thing though, interesting this morning was like, I had never, I lost the belt before. I never once felt that like what, what all the champions who've lost the belt say of, um, uh, like I think Matt Hughes was one of the first people to say it. Well, like when he lost the belt, he was like, oh, whew, that pressure. I never felt that before. I never felt that even when I lost the belt at Madison Square Garden, I never felt the pressure of like, oh, whew, you know, heavy is the crown. Cause I'm still me, you know, no matter what. I never felt that before, but this morning, I don't know. I remember thinking like, huh, what's next? Cause this coach even told me, is like, bro, if we bring this show to Africa, the only person we want to fight is you. It's, it has to be you. I'm like, ah, we'll see. I'm not, like, yeah, I'm not. People think I, I need to get this one back. Uh, nah, I'm chill. I'm like, eh, we'll see what happens. But I don't know what's next. I haven't really thought that far, but I just know I want to keep training. I want to keep getting better. I want to, I don't want to lose these gains. And I'm in a better headspace than I was after the last fight, way better. Cause I actually enjoyed the, the performance and I felt like I got to showcase a lot more of, you know, who I am rather than just fighting injured and not really showcasing who I am. So yeah, um, I just want to get back to the gym after the strip. Just wrapping up the exchange of pleasantries between you and Drake is mm. after, what was it, 14 plus months of, I don't know, tension build up since UFC 290 and everything that was said back and forth. And um, can we say the beef is squashed, is it? Yeah, I mean, it was never uh, as beef. Again, I want to say beef is just like, you have to fight someone, you don't have to like them. You don't have to like him. And again, he didn't like me, I didn't like him. But I think now we have a, a healthy respect for each other. And I wouldn't say we're BFFs or we're friends, but if I see him, it's love. I'll give him a hug, I'll give him, I'll dap him up. But then the weird thing is this thing, <laughs> I'm gonna, it'll come back again. It will, the, either the fight with him or just a fight for the belt at some point will come back again. It always me and that thing, it always just comes back again. But I'm not worried about it. I don't know what's next, but Mm, yeah, me and Drick is, is cool. I'm not gonna, I don't have any ill feelings towards him. I don't harbor any hate. Um, and I, he even apologized to mom and dad. So I was like, oh, that's cool. He's a mini, as a proper African called him mom. So I was like, okay, he shows respect to you know, his elders. And yeah, like I said, we, we paved the way for him. You know? So now I say he, he needs to, he's gonna inspire the next generation as well. And I look forward to that. I look forward to going back home uh, this week, tomorrow. Yeah. Mm. What are some of the positives or some more of the positives that you've taken from this fight after your layoff? Mm. Positives. Yeah, just keep doing what I've been doing. Like this, all my camps are gonna be like this and better from now on. They're gonna be even better. Like just, I'm gonna stack up on top of these and get better and there's so much room for improvement because i've always said i'm the runt of my people when we did those testings some of the numbers were great some of the numbers weren't so great so those ones are like average so i'm like man we got this far with those average numbers for for me so i'm like yeah we can work on those get my numbers up and then yeah build off that but yeah positives are a great team be beside us behind us um, and I look forward to the future for what it has in store for me and the gym. And some of the young guys coming up now, I want to see Cam Ralston this weekend and Contender Series and Navajo and then Aaron Tozum up. Yeah, I want to see them. How soon can we see you back in the cage? See, this is that kind of dumbass reporter. <laughs> Questions <laughs> I expect from my own brother. What the fuck you think you are? No, no. But um, I don't know. I'm not like I said. This is I'm not. Enjoy me while I'm here, man. Enjoy me while I while I fight. I, I started watching the fight. I literally was like, fuck, I can go again. <laughs> yeah, That's the instinct. Ass. I know, but yeah, but but. I'm a great reporter, guys. Don't listen to that. <laughs> yeah. I was like, fuck, I can go again. I still feel good. I'm like, literally, I can, bro. If I, I can fight this weekend. Don't have to even make rock and fight this weekend, but I'm like, mm. eh. 
we'll see. I just want to get back to the gym, get training again, and then we'll, we'll reset, regroup. Yeah. We'll see. Thank you for your time, Chad. Hey guys, what's up? Izzy here. Like, subscribe, and comment if you enjoy this video.